Okay gang, so the last video I kind of alluded to the fact that things get a little different with uh, imine formation if instead you use a secondary amine. You actually form a functional group called an enamine, right? Another big word for your vocabulary. And if you take a sneak peek over here, you might be thinking to yourself like, what the hell? Where did that come from? But rest assured, this double bond, all that jazz, that's just a little tweak at the end. The mechanism is almost identical to the imine mechanism, I promise. Okay? But there are some elements you do recognize, right? So we have this, you know, nucleophile, but we're still in an acid catalyzed environment, and we're still going to drive off water for that entropic effect. The other thing you might uh, recognize is that now instead of that three carbon carbonyl I've been using all the time, we have this four carbon carbonyl. The reason why I use this is just because it's simple, right? It's a small ketone. I have to use this in this, per, uh, in this situation because of the double bond, but I'll explain it at the end. Okay, so just follow me. So luckily, the first step never changes. We're going to protonate that carbonyl to make it a little more reactive to make it activated. So let's enter in some hydronium, positive charge. We will grab a proton and protonate that big bad carbonyl. Okay, so now that we've protonated him, right, this carbon is definitely ready. He's hankering for some, for some nucleophilic substitution, some attack. So let's enter in our uh, amine right there. In, in this case, it's diethyl amine, right, because we have two amines or two ethyls attached to that amine. So I'm going to draw him like this. He's an H. Swing those electrons in there to attack the carbonyl carbon. I'll swing these electrons up right there. Okay, so not going to lie, things are going to get a little crowded in this intermediate. So hopefully I draw this enough, big enough for you guys to see. So I'm going to throw my OH to the left. And then this big mess over here I'm going to put to the right. So nitrogen, I have an ethyl group there. I have an ethyl group there. And then I'm going to throw the hydrogen down there, plus charge on the nitrogen. Okay, nothing changes like it has in the past. We want the OH gone, right? We need to make him a better leaving group. Let's protonate him. We want this nitrogen piece to stay. Let's deprotonate him. So I'll draw my hydronium. This oxygen will grab that proton. At the same time, this nitrogen we deprotonated by some good old H2O. Right? And remember, this is that plus H plus minus H plus proton shuffle step, right? Okay, so I'll give you a second to look at that. And the result of that electron flow is going to look like this, right? We successfully protonated that oxygen and now we have water and now we have that deprotonated amine piece, right? With a, now he's a lone pair. Again, same thing. You've seen this before. We need this piece to leave. We need to give him a reason to leave. Let's swing this electron pair down as, for, as a double bond. And then we'll kick off the oxygen, the water, right there. Again, remember, this is that entropic effect, right? This helps the entropy of the reaction because we're producing another product, right? We're driving off water. Okay, so this is where things get interesting. In the imine mechanism, I don't know if you guys remember this, but we had a hydrogen just to snatch up and dump electrons onto that nitrogen and we got rid of the positive charge. However, we don't have that, right? Because of this nature of being a secondary amine, we don't have any more hydrogens to give. We got rid of our only one over in the proton shuffle step. So here's where we have to get creative. Here's where I'm going to look at this carbon and I'm going to draw its hydrogen. We're going to have water come along. We're going to grab this hydrogen and in a very E2-like kind of step, I'm going to grab this hydrogen, its electrons will swing down to form a double bond, and then these electrons are going to kick up onto nitrogen. That will help get rid of that positive charge. So just, just as a side note, right, we form our, our acid back. We have our H3O+, but there's a lot going on here, so I want to focus on this. Because there's a reason I'm drawing that double bond the way it is. Okay, so you can see the elimination type step 
is because we don't have hydrogen to do an acid base exchange with to get rid of nitrogen's positive formal charge. However, there's a reason why I picked this right hand side to do the elimination with versus this side over here. Here's why. Because in, uh, enamines are usually big bulky pieces, right? There would be a lot of steric strain. I'll draw the opposite form for you. The other way we could form this enamine would be like this. So my question to you guys is what would cause more steric strain? I would argue and say this is sterically cumbersome. It's not good. Usually we'll have bigger, bigger pieces on both sides of the enamine, but remember what a double bond does. Remember it's two sets of p orbitals that must stay parallel to each other. So if we can form a double bond and fo force you know, an alkyl piece a certain way away from this nitrogen enamine piece, that's sterically good, right? There's no chance of having this steric interaction because there's no free rotation about this bond axis, right? So basically, and for you OCHEM1 people, you either have to, you, you make what is the, uh, what's called the E double bond, right? Or kind of like in, paren or in quotes, trans, right? You want to force, you want to make a double bond that forces a bulk, the bulkier alk uh, alkyl piece away from the enamine, okay? So let's draw the reverse mechanism of this. And at the end of the reverse mechanism, I'm going to then show like an example of a complete the reaction as to what double bond you would form with an enamine because that's the one defining characteristic of an enamine. Okay, I'll erase this one sec. All right, gang, just like we did for the acetal functional group, the imines, now for the enamines, let's draw the reverse. And I promise you, after this, there's only one more mechanism. It's only the forward mechanism, and then we are done doing new stuff. Okay, so. Let's take a look at how to reverse this sucker. So here is our final enamine product. And remember, that last step was kind of like that weird elimination step. We kind of have to undo that. And here's kind of how I think about it. The last thing I remember is we had to kick electrons up onto the nitrogen. So what I always do, because sometimes I forget, oh my gosh, like where do I start? I swing these electrons down, I reform this double bond. That means this double bond has to go somewhere, right? And that is when I usually remember, oh, right, we had to take a hydrogen away, so then I'll just have this double bond go ahead and snatch up a hydrogen, and then once you've done that, you can get to this step, right? There's no double bond, so you don't have to draw the, the, the chain a weird way. We now have the double bond right there, a nitrogen, the two ethyl pieces, and that plus charge, right? So that's usually how I always start off. I always swing the nitrogen electrons down, reform this double bond, and then usually it clicks in my head, oh, Joe, you gotta grab an H or an H plus from hydronium. Okay, so this looks familiar, right? Now we kind of have a better idea of where we stand. Remember, the forward mechanism subtracts water, so the reverse, we have to add it in. And right here, our carbonyl carbon is definitely ready to be attacked, so let's throw in our water. We'll attack the carbonyl carbon. We'll kick up electrons onto the nitrogen. And now we're going to draw a, you know, like that big, messy intermediate. So hopefully I can draw this big enough for you guys. So I'm going to draw my OH, to, or the, the water I just added. I'm going to draw that to the right. Actually, I'm going to expand those electrons, or expand the hydrogens. Positive charge on oxygen. And then I'm going to draw that big, nasty enamine-esque piece to the left, right? So we now we have a nitrogen and we have these two ethyl pieces. Okay, remember, we protonate things we want to get out, get the hell out, and we deprotonate things we want to stay, all right? So let's protonate this nitrogen. So I'm going to draw my hydronium, right, H2O, and then with an extra eight, our hydrogen, we'll grab him, electrons go dump off on that oxygen, and then I want to deprotonate this oxygen right here, right? So I'll grab a water. He'll snatch up one of the protons, right? And then those electrons swing back onto oxygen. Remember, this is that classic, I keep saying it, sorry if it's annoying, but it's a little bit of a proton shuffle, right? There you go. Okay, so let's see what that electron flow gave us. 
So remember, we just have an OH from the water we added, and then now we have that protonated amine piece. Right, so he's got the two ethyl pieces, but he also has a bond to hydrogen and a plus charge. Remember, we need to get rid of him. What's the motivation? What's that driving force? Well, it's going to be the formation of a double bond, the reforming of carbonyl. So then let's give him the boot, right? And what that does for us is now we have our carbonyl back, and all we have to do is clean him up. And in doing so, you guessed it, just like every other time, we have recovered our catalytic acid. So now we have our four carbon carbonyl back, as well as our H3O plus. Okay, so not bad, right? I mean, I hope you can see that there are many similarities, and hopefully I've explained it in the way that I've been saying the same thing over and over again. Don't get frustrated if you can't get it on the first try. I practiced these mechanisms so many times, guys. A, a bone crushing, just mind bending amount of times. But if you just do it a few times, you'll get really good at it, I promise. Okay, so I told you guys I would give you a little a bit of an example of which way to make a double bond with an enamine. So let me give you an example, real quick. If I were to give you guys this carbonyl right here, okay? And I were to give you the same enamine we've been using here, the same uh, primary amine, H plus minus H2O. Okay, so let's pick this part. Right, so we have a carbonyl, and then we have a, prime, or a secondary amine, right? So we must be forming an enamine because we're in an acid environment and we're subtracting water. Okay, so this is the type of thing we're expecting, right? I have a single bond up here, my ethyl groups. Now, and my group, my CH3 group over here. So which way do I put the double bond, right? Which one am I going to lock into place? Well, as you can see, there's no kind of rotation here, right? Do I want to lock this methyl group into place right next to this nitrogen? No, I'm going to put him to the left, right? I hope that kind of makes sense. Okay, gang. So one more mechanism. It's an only a forward mechanism with a little conceptual piece to it. It's not hard. It's the easiest thing out of all of this stuff. So you're almost there. After the next video, you can do that full mechanism worksheet. And I really think you guys should hit it at least two or three times, okay?